Hallelujah. We thank God for what he is doing in our midst. We began to look at Kingdom Keys for Financial Dominion two Sundays ago. And we have looked at uh, several things already. I know we have looked at the definitions of financial dominion, financial prosperity, especially as it concerns we, the believers in Christ Jesus. We looked at the seven basic characters of money. We also looked at what normally causes poverty among men, especially the children of God. And then, last week we looked at the life of Jesus. We saw 13 pieces of evidence that shows that Jesus walked in financial dominion. And we, his disciples, who are striving to become like him, we must we must strive to walk in financial dominion. And we also saw the motivations, the two major motivations that we must have, the motive for the pursuit of financial dominion. One of them is for the glory of God, to the glory of God. And the other one is for the advancement of his what? His kingdom. Praise the Lord. Today we want to now look at the keys themselves. The keys themselves. Now, I want us to first of all look at what Jesus Christ said about the kingdom and how to dominate for him. Luke chapter 12. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 12. Please may I uh, encourage those of us who by any means you have not listened or followed in the first message in the series and in the second message you may need to get to the media or to some of our social media platform, telegram and all of that get the message and listen to them so that you'll be able to follow in what we are doing now Luke chapter 12 I want us to read from verse 29 again please follow the reading somebody's life is changing drastically this evening drastic change because of what God is showing us now look at verse 29 Luke 12, 29. He said, and Jesus was the one speaking. He has been speaking. In fact, if you look at verse 22, if the words of Jesus are in red in your Bible, you will notice that he started speaking to the disciples from verse 22. Verse 22 said, and he said unto his disciples. And then you see his words in red until verse 29. Now, verse 29, he said, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. Why? For all these things do the nations of the world seek what? Seek after. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. Next verse. He said, but rather, seek ye what? The kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Rather, instead of seeking what to eat, instead of seeking what to drink, which all other nations or the Gentiles, the unbelievers, those who doesn't know God, their mindset and what they look for is what to eat and what to drink. Jesus said, don't seek them. If you are going to work, don't go to work because you are looking for what to eat. If you are go, uh, uh, doing business, let it not be because you are looking for what to eat. Rather, 
let your pursuit, let your seeking be for the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be what? Added unto you. Verse 32. In verse 32 he said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to do what? To give you the kingdom. Don't be afraid. Fear is one of the things that the devil uses to cripple people from doing what they are supposed to do. Fear. And it's going to be a prerequisite. If you are going to walk in financial dominion, you must conquer fear. Jesus was talking to the disciples. He said, fear not. Because your father wants to give you the kingdom. Remember that the kingdom of God is a domain where God is the king. He's ruling. Where the dominion of God is established. Fear not. Everybody read verse 33 together. One to go. Sell that you have and give arms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that felleth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. Why? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus now spoke to the disciples and said, when you have dealt with fear and conquered fear, the next thing that you must do, if you are going to have dominion or establish the kingdom, is that you must go into business. You must do what? Eh? What did you read in verse 33? What did you read? Eh? Sell what you have. What is sell? Eh? What is sell? Hmm. Mm. Listen carefully. Let me ask. Is this a suggestion from Jesus or a command? Disciples of Christ, listen. Jesus Christ said, if you are going to work in financial dominion, you must start a business. That cell you are seeing there is not a spiritual cell. Because, you know, there is a way we believers, religious people, will interpret everything spiritually. Even when it's obvious that the thing is physical. What is there? I have handkerchief. And I decided to exchange it for money. So when I give it to you, you will give me money. That is business. In this time of crisis, economic hardship, prices of things going up higher and higher every day, the Lord is bringing back his instruction to his disciples. Go into what? Uh, some of you are not comfortable with this. Especially those who like civil servants or civil service. Eh? You know, civil service is a way of selling what you have. It's a way. 
But I'm, I'm going to show you something today that God showed me in the Bible. Sell what you have, says Jesus. Now listen, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, listen carefully. Okay, before I go on, there are two major keys, two major keys for financial dominion, two of them. One of them is key of, let me call it high-scale business. High-scale business. Number two is key of management of the business cash flow. What is number one? High-scale business. Two, management of what? Business cash flow. High scale business is a business that you are doing in a large in a large way, in an expanded way. Why management? Of course, you know what management is. The business cash flow. The cash flow is talking about the money that enters in. And goes out of the business. How do you manage it? These are two major keys for financial dominion. You, it will surprise you. I would show us from the book of Genesis chapter one that in Genesis chapter one, God gave man the first key of dominating the earth, which is high scale business. Then in Genesis chapter two. He gave man the second key, which is management of business cash flow. Let's, let me show you that quickly before we move on. Go to Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 20, 28. Let me go straight to verse 28. And God blessed them. That's nice. okay. Look at verse 26. Let's start from 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Then verse 27. So... God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Everybody was 28 together. want to go. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now listen carefully. In verse 20, 26, God said, I need to equip this man with my image and likeness. With my spirit. With a spiritual force that will enable him to have dominion over the earth. Because the purpose of my creating him is to rule for me on the earth. Now in verse 28, after he finished creating the man, he now said to the man, the purpose for which I created you is to have dominion over the earth. Now, listen. The way you are going to have this dominion is, number one, you are going to be fruitful. Number two, you will what? Multiply. Number three, you will what? Replenish the earth. Number four, you will what? You will subdue it. Four business steps that the man must take in order to dominate. What did I call them? Four business steps. Now listen carefully. Many of us have understood the word be fruitful as produce children. Am I correct? The understanding in the heart of an average Bible reader 
is that this be fruitful, what God meant is that have children. But listen, I checked the Bible dictionary to find out the original Hebrew word for fruitful. And the original Hebrew word for fruitful is um, para. Say para. Not paracetamol. P-A-R-A-H. And what that word means in English is to produce fruit. To what? To produce fruit. Then I went to also check what fruit means in Hebrew and in English. And the Hebrew word for fruit is what? P-R-I-Y. Pry. Say pry. And the word pry means five things. Number one, it means a product. Number two, it means a reward. Number three, it means a price. Number four, it means earnings. What you are earning. And then number five, it means result. So when God said to the man, be fruitful, look at what God is telling the man. He's telling the man, produce a product that you can be rewarded for. Watch the five words. You will get them inside this definition now. The first one is product, reward, price, earnings, and what? Result. Now listen, so that we can combine it. Produce a product that you can be rewarded for as it is sold at a price. And that becomes your earnings, which is the result of your innovation. Did you hear me? We combined para and pry in order to get the meaning of be fruitful. And look at what be fruitful that God was telling the man. He's saying to the man, you have to be innovative. That is why I didn't build a house for you. You should be able to buy innovation, produce a product called cement. Eh? Concrete. That will enable you to do what? I didn't give you seeds. I gave you trees. By innovation, you should be able to produce a product called seed, table. Is it God that created seed? Are you, are, you are not responding. Is it God that created fan? Is it God that created a wardrobe? I gave you my image. My spirit in you has differentiated you from every other animal. Because animals have soul and body. They don't have spirit. And that's why they cannot think and get a product out. Have you ever seen a product and you are asking, who produced this? And they say, it's one intelligent cattle. Eh? No! When God said to the man, be fruitful, what you should know is that there is already a seed. You know that fruit comes from seed, isn't it? When Jesus said to the disciples, sell what you have, he didn't ask them, do you have anything? Did Jesus ask them, do you have anything? What did he say to them? Because he knew that they have something. He has given them something. Produce a product that you can be rewarded for. Because that product has a monetary value. It has a price that will become your earning.
And that will become the result of your innovation. And then, when you move away from be fruitful, the next word you are going to get there is what? Eh? Multiply. Multiply means must produce the fruit. That's why we said it's not just a business. It's what? A high-scale business. If the product is seed, must produce it. If you finish mass producing it, he said, replenish the earth. Replenish means have a wide distribution network and distribute it all through the earth. I was talking to mommy. I said, this peanut you are doing, that logo quarters are buying on it. Do you know that if you produce the quantity that will serve not Ologo quarters but Enugu city and you are supplying because before she finished supplying, they are buying on it. If you finish supply it all through, if your gain per week is 5,000, do you know that your gain per week can become 500,000? Eh? A week still the same that's why we say it's not a small scale business it's what high scale business from the beginning of creation god commanded the man you must do a what high scale business the last word there that says subdue it is that your product we now become a control. You know that if people that are producing bread now decide we are going on strike, what do you notice? What do you notice? You will see people wanting to buy bread. They will have their money and they will be begging. Is there any bread? The people that are producing bread, they are now in control. Even though you will buy it with money, but let them not go on strike. Because the product is already ruling. So when they take a decision, you'll be in trouble if it's a negative one. That becomes a dominion power. Such that when you, your product, you decide to say, I'm not producing again, Nigerian government will call you for a meeting. I say, why will you starve the whole nation? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm talking about? Listen, this is God talking business in the very first chapter. In fact, the very first command he gave the man. The church of Thessalonica is one church that became so obsessed with the coming of the Lord Jesus that when you tell a brother Go to work. He said, no, how can I go to work when Jesus is coming very soon? I have to wait for the coming of the Lord. Go and do business. Go and find something to do. So that we, he said, no, I am depending on the Lord. I'm living by faith. Have you heard about living by faith? Have you heard about living by faith? And I said, if all of us are living by faith, that is, Nobody is working. When you wake up in the morning, everybody, you just pray and say, God, provide. And then you are expecting God to throw down food from heaven. Isn't it? Because all of us are living by faith. We are believing God to throw down money from heaven. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The people that are living by faith, maybe God has called them into full-time ministry. They are succeeding in living by faith because some of us are working. You are not getting what I'm saying. If all of us stop working and we now say we are living all living by faith, who will give the other person? 
So when you hear somebody saying, I was waiting upon the Lord, living by faith, and after I waited for three hours, the next thing you are going to hear is that a brother knocked. Where did the brother get what he's bringing? From work, from business. The church of Thessalonica gets so much obsessed. They say, Jesus is coming very soon. And Paul has to write the first letter. When he finished writing the first letter, they did not hear. He wrote the second one. In fact, in the second one, he now said to them, if any one of you is not working, he should not what? Eat! What kind of thing is this? If you don't work, no food for you. You know, one man of God was eating food. When a, 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 somebody entered, a brother entered his house. And as brother entered his house, he packed the food he's eating and took it inside and came out and said to the brother, let's discuss, what, what, why did you come? Let's talk. And the brother said, ah, I met you eating. Are we not brethren? Bring out food so that we eat together now. And the man of God said to him, the Bible said that he that does not work should not eat. You are not working and you should not eat. I want to obey the Bible. <laughs> I want to what? Obey the Bible. And he was very serious. He never brought out the food. When the man left, he brought out his food and was eating for himself. So you are waiting for the coming of the Lord. When the Lord says you should occupy. If you read the word occupy, what does it mean? Do business till I come. Do what? Let's check it. Luke 19, so that you will see what Jesus... See, I am sure we may not be able to get to the second key today. But I said the second key is management. You will see that in chapter 2 of Genesis. Maybe when we finish dealing with business today, another day we check the second key. But look at Luke chapter 19. All of you that are not doing business, after today, you must enter business. It's a command from Jesus. Jesus said, and this business we are talking about is not this your one chop. What kind of business are we talking about? You must have a large heart for high scale. We are going small, small. Tell your neighbor we are moving small, small. Luke chapter 19. Look at verse... 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should appear how? Immediately. So, the disciples were thinking that the kingdom of God should what? Appear immediately. That Christ is here now. He has come again. So we should not walk. And then he now said to them. He said therefore. A certain noble man. Went into a far country. To rescue for himself. A kingdom. And to return. Somebody say kingdom. kingdom. If you understand the purpose of Jesus. We have shared it in the first message. In this series. That what he is targeting is. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. We are. That's why we are here. Before you go to heaven, you, the kingdom must come here. Verse 13. He called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I what? Check your version. There is a version that said, do business. Which version is that? New King James. Thank God it's even New King James. So that you will see that from New King James. Oh, oh this one is what? What's, what's this version? Look at this one, one on the screen. He called ten of his slaves. Gave them ten miners. And told them. What did he tell them? Engage in business until 
I come back. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. The master is about to come. But before he come, he gave me and you a command. The command is this. Engage in business. And keep doing it. Until he come. I know there are some of you that are already in business are happy. Say yes. Wabafa. Tell them. But I want to warn you that the business we are talking about is not your kind of business. What kind of business are we talking about? Replenish the earth. Somebody's heart will be enlarged today. It takes a large heart to do a large business. Amen. So Jesus said, sell what you have. Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The first thing Paul told Thessalonians in the first letter, and they did not listen to it. You have to come back the second time in the second letter. And now said, if you don't walk, don't eat. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 12 and 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 verse 12. Are you there? So let's go. Everybody, read it together. I want to go. And that you study to be quiet, comma, and to do your own business. Your what? Your own business. Your what? Say it three times. Your what? And what again? And to work with your hands as we commanded you is not a suggestion, brothers and sisters. You have to own a business. Do you know the meaning of the word own? Your what? Own business. Why am I commanding you? Or why did we command you to own your own business? Look at the reason in verse 12. What is the reason? That ye may walk honestly towards them that are without. And that you will have lack of nothing. Let me hear that from a simpler version. Maybe NIV or good news. Verse 12 only. What did he say? So that your daily life will win the respect of outsiders. And what again? And so that you will not be dependent on anyone. Did you, did you hear that? The person that owned the school that you are teaching is an unbeliever. He doesn't know God. As if you cannot own a school. Something is telling you that I cannot own a school. Even when you have seen the capacity to own a school in you. Sell what you have. Jesus knows that you have something. That's why he didn't bother to ask you, do you have anything? Are you following me at all? You have something. Every man was equipped by God with a unique gift. You will notice that what you can do very well Another person will not be able to do that. This is a command to believers. This is not a command, a, a suggestion. All of you must own your what? If you know that you did not own a business here, whether you are a student, or because some of you will say, I'm still a student. Let me even talk to you students. Listen carefully. The colonial masters 
that colonized Nigeria and other African countries. Listen carefully. They believe that the black should be servants to the white. That's why they even came to do colonization. So when they establish a school system for the black, they didn't establish it according to their own. Listen carefully. In Europe and some Asia countries, in these countries you call developed countries, listen, that's what they call high school. Just for you to get what I'm talking about. That's what they call high school. You enter high school when you finish your primary school. And high school is like the, our secondary school. But what is high school? In high school, they will train you to be an employer. They will train you, if they are training you to be an engineer, they are training you to start your own engineering company the, the moment you are finishing. Just high school. It is those that want to be professors and lecturers that goes to university. Are you getting what I'm saying? But going to high school alone, after primary school, will make you to establish, oh my God. But look at the system of education they gave us. From year one, you are already thinking of which course will I do now so that I will get a, a good job. Eh? The mindset of which people are looking for admission is what? Employable course. So from the day one, you are already thinking employee, employee, employ me. If I go to university and come out, where will I look for? So they made us to neglect the gift that is in us. The education system has no room to develop and sharpen. Go to those countries now. Listen, look at what they are doing now. As the child is growing, and they notice that this child has a musical skill, eh? they will send the, the child to music school. Straight! This child can play football very well. They send the child straight to football academy. Volleyball academy. Straight! But what we are doing is to force everybody to read a medical course. Because it's only a medical course that has hope <laughs> of employee. So even as parents, you see you telling your child, you must be a doctor. Say, I must be a doctor. <laughs> eh? Say, I must be a doctor. Because you want to make the child believe and accept that he must be so that he will just read it and you know. You have to do your own business. There is a gift in you. What is a gift? A gift is an ability, a special ability given to you by God to do some particular things better than others. Did you hear that? You can call it a talent. And Proverbs 18 verse 16 said what? Proverbs 18 16 said what? A man's gift. A man's gift. Make it room. For him. A man's gifts. Even if there is no room. They say that the door is locked. And you come with your gifts. What will happen? Come on. The door will be open. They say open the door. The man with a gift has arrived. It will make a room. For you. And. What else? Bring get him be, before what? Great men. Bring get him before, before great men. You know, Paul was telling Timothy, do not neglect or despise the gift that is where? 
the gift that is in you. You know, when David, you remember the story of David. After David was anointed in um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, you will notice that the next thing that happened after he was anointed was that an evil spirit came upon Saul and Saul became a mad person. And then they said, Saul, uh, somebody says to Saul, now that you are mad, let's look for somebody who can play keyboard very well or jitter so that when the spirit of madness comes upon you, the person will play and then at least the spirit will go. And Saul now said, please look for somebody. You see that in verse 17 and 18. Look for somebody. Verse 17 says, Saul said unto his servant, provide me now a man that can do what? Play well. I'm coming to that. I'm, wait for me, I'm coming to playing well. A man that can play well and bring him to me. Eh? Next verse. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have what? I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person. The Lord is with him. What is next? Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. Excuse me. What is it that brought David before the great man Saul? Eh? Ability to play guitar. Hmm. What do you have? In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, a woman ran to the man of God, Elijah, and said, Man of God, my husband is also a man of God before he died. But after he has died, the creditor, that is the person that he borrowed money from, came and said he will take my two sons because my husband is owing him. And he said, if you cannot pay, I will take your two sons. Man of God, I'm in trouble. What is the next thing? Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have we are in your house? Listen, listen. This is a man of God that feared God. And this is the kind of thing we are seeing in our time. Man of God that feared God, yet is in deep poverty. Looking for who to borrow from. There are some of us, God forbid, the kind of debt you have entered into. If you die like this man, they will come and carry all your children. The man has come. And Elisha said, What do you have in your house? The solution to your problem of poverty. Your husband, the Bible says, a good man, liveth inheritance for his what? For his children, children. You will see that in Proverbs 22, verse 13. Proverbs 22, 13 said, a good man liveth inheritance for his what? Children, children. But what this man left for his children, not even children, children, is what? <laughs> he left my race of debt that 
you know, want to take away the life of his children. And the man of God said, your solution to your problem is very simple. You have something. And if you follow my instruction now, you will come out of poverty now. What did he say to him? Okay, he said, she said, thy handmaid did not have anything in the house except a pot of oil. Are you noticing something there? In other words, she is not regarding the pot of oil as what? As anything. I don't have anything. What do I have? And that's the problem with many of us. I don't have anything. The man that was given a talent, one talent, he didn't apply and employ that talent because he believed that this is not anything. He believed that the people that was given five talent, two talent, have something. But he doesn't have anything. I don't have anything. Just a pot of oil. Let's go. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. An empty vessel. Borrow not what? Somebody say high scale. High scale business. Say it again. Coming out of poverty, the man of God did not say go and borrow one vessel. Borrow not what? It takes a large heart to do this. It takes faith to step out. Where there is fear, there is no faith. Where there is faith, there is no fear. Go to all your neighbors and borrow. In other words, she had and she must have good relationship with what? His neighbors. So inside the journey to financial dominion is what? Good relationship. This young man that recommended David to Saul. What if David cheated him one day they did business? An opportunity came. Will he recommend David to Saul? Relationship. That's what they call many, uh, destiny helpers. It was somebody that spoke about Joseph to Pharaoh. And said to Pharaoh, this problem you have, there is somebody I know that can solve it. If Joseph has treated that young man bad in the prison and he doesn't have a good relationship with him, will he talk about him? Borrow not a few from all your neighbors. Eh? And somebody is saying, how do I expand my business? I saw a place of borrowing. <laughs> eh? Neighbor, I have a product I want to mass produce. Eh? And this business is going to scale. You can invest in it and it will fly. Borrow not a few. Man of God is talking. Go ahead. And when thou hast come in and has sh thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, thou shalt pour out into all those verses. Every business that succeeds has a secret. Did you hear me? Every business that you are seeing that is succeeding has what? Where do you must produce where do you develop the product shut the what shut the door upon thee and upon all the inner workers quality control people 
shut the door. And then start pouring. Pour into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is what? Full. Go ahead. So she went from him. Somebody say obedience. And shut the door upon her. We didn't know whether she borrowed anything. No. Are you noticing that? It's like she did not borrow anything. She just went from him. And the next thing the Bible told us that she did was that she did what? She shut the door. And what happened? She started pouring. And as she was pouring, the divine hand, God said, I will bless the works of your hand. But when there is no work in your hand, where will the blessing come upon? He began to multiply. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. Small oil is still flowing, multiplying. That's when you know that they ask you, how, what is the secret of his business? They say, I don't understand. All I know is that before the first job, I am through with the first job, two other contracts is already waiting. As if something is lining them up. Lining them up. That's the divine hand. Multiplying. And when he said, bring another vessel more, what happened? The oil stopped. Because there's no more ever. So, who limited the business now? Is it God or the woman? Who decided that the business center will be only one shop? Who, who de- decided? You are the one. You, not the woman, the man. There are men here too. Not only woman that has business center. Eh? Not God. As far as God is concerned, he's ready for what? Listen. God is big. We sing it in a song, but we don't believe it. You are big, big, big. Large, large, large. But when you want to represent God, you'll be representing God with what? One small, small business. Oh yeah, let's go. She came to the man of God and said to the man of God, I have done as you have said. What did the man say? Read it for me carefully. Go, comma, sell the oil, comma, and do what? Pay thy debt. And what again? And leave thou and thy children of the rest. Listen carefully. Some of you will carry the oil and begin to dash people. And say, the Lord did a miracle for me. And I want to do what? Dash you the oil. The man said what? Put a price on this oil. And collect money. Because you need money. How many of you here, you don't need money? Sell the oil. And you are in debt. And upon the fact that you are in debt, you are, oh my God, you know some of us, I'm coming to this. This is the management aspect. I don't want to deal with it today. Management. But the first thing is sell the oil. Sell what you have. Sell what you have. Convert what you have to a product that has a market value. I met a young man at UNN last Wednesday. We just finished discipleship and he saw me, he was passing, he saw me and then he called me and then came. You know that young man? The one that is playing SAS, reading mathematics. So, he greeted me, he's in Teddy now, I got to know him before he got admission. And we started talking. He told me that he is the one that is sponsoring himself in school now. He pays his school fees, pays everything, and he's living in his own room. I said, what about your family at Enugu? 
where I know you. He said, his parents has packed us where they are living, but he himself, he rented his own room, self-come, where he's living. I say, you, you mean you, you rented? You paid for it? He said, yes. I have to ask the next question. How did you get the money for having your own house and you are... You know what he said? He said to me that I am only doing home lesson for two persons in Enugu. Just two persons. I'm collecting 20000 for one person per month. 25000 for the other person per month. He's a student of mathematics. And every month he just do it and collect 45000 and use it to be solving his problems. He didn't tell me other sources of income, but this one is, I think, should be the major one. That was why he presented it. What do you have? Some of you have mathematics. And people need mathematics. Some of you have English language. And people need English language. Let me ask. This is a student that is going to lecture Monday to Friday doing all the assignments, but comes to Enugu during weekend, Saturday, to teach two persons. Are you following me? What if he is not a student at all, and he decides to take seven persons in a week, and he's collecting 20,000 for the seven? 20 times seven is what? Eh? What if he decide to start a tutorial center? There is something that you have oh, that is lying dormant. And for you, I have, I have nothing except this one. What brought David before the king was Jita? Do your own business and work with your hands. Paul said in Acts 20, 35. Look at Paul. In Acts 20 from verse 33. Acts 20, 33. Are you there? Are you there? Okay. Look at it. You can read it together. One to go. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I am not covetous about your money. Why? You yourself know that these hands of mine have what? Ministered to me. To my needs and to those who are what? With me. How many disciples are with Paul? And Paul said, My hands have fed me and fed all these disciples. Go ahead. I have showed you all things that you have to labor so that you will have more than enough to support the weak. And to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said... It is more blessed to give than to what? Paul was a missionary. Full time. What people call full time. But Paul said, I resign from being a barrister. I have a certificate. But instead of working as a lawyer, I decided to become self-employed. So when he finished preaching, he will go to the forest, cut materials for tent making. And as he's making the tent, he's speaking in tongues. He said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. When? As he's, you know, when you read his epistles, he will say to the Corinthians, I'm praying for you day and night. When and how? He's making tent. Lebo shandola bashanda. It's frying peanut for some of you. Landelep. You know, some of you started peanut and you have stopped. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to go back. 
go back. Walking with your... Let me ask some of you that say, I'm a civil servant. You know, what is happening now, we we show you that your salary is going nowhere. Because you are collecting 10000 when the price of a painter of Gary is 500 naira. Now, the painter of Gary is what? 2005. And how much are you still collecting? 10,000. And you are not yet wise to know that you will wake up by 3 o'clock and do your quiet time 3 to 5 or 3 to 4. And then you fry peanut or fry something else. Or, you, know, you, you know how to fry buns. I don't know why you are not frying buns. You have a shop. What stops you from placing a showcase and putting buns you fry in the morning? Don't you know that people are hungry? Pure water can give you a lot of money. And you're saying, eh, we don't know where your things are going, no. These days, oh, even to eat is difficult. It's a lie. Sell what you have. There are things you have that you must follow the instruction of the Holy Ghost. Elisha is representing the Holy Ghost in the story of that woman. Are you getting me? Because the woman was acting, acting based on the instruction. She went to the Holy Ghost and said, what do I do? And the Holy Ghost said, you have something. Eh? You can cook well. How many times have you finished cooking? And people are saying, who cooked this food? Hi! Who cooked this food? And not one person, not twice. And it's consistent. You know, one of our brothers is here. I used to stay with him when I visit in, uh, uh, when I want to sleep over in, in Suga. And he has a special consistent tasty rice. I will not forget this brother for his rice. And he had discovered that I like the rice. So anytime I'm coming, and if you ask him, what do you, the taste is consistent. And I say, brother, can't you open a small restaurant? Let's start from... Because, let me tell you something. When you have something and you develop it so that you will not just be able to play guitar, but play well. What kind of person is Paul looking for? A competent guitarist. Eh? What do I call it? Competent. You have to refine your gift. Develop your competence is having enough knowledge and ability to do something successfully and to do it well. Listen, what the world is looking for is excellence. Do you know that when you mine a gold from the ground, that gold can make you a millionaire. But do you know that if you bring out gold to the market and start selling and say, please buy gold, people will not even know what you are talking about. You need to take this gold that you have and do what? And refine it, refine it, refine it until it became so refined that before you ever bring it out, people are saying, please, I want to buy, I want to buy, I want to buy. Tell your neighbor you have something. God even know that you have something. This thing you are crying and saying, hey, I don't know, where will I get money to pay my children's school fees? Where will I get money? Stop that nonsense. Sell what you have. And money will come. That's what they call value. Somebody say value. What is value? Value is the ability to use what you have to solve a problem. Are you getting me? Eh? See, money, anytime you see money entering your hand, it is because value has left you. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Let's say you are a teacher. Why are they giving you money at the end of the month? Why? Because you have provided value to the students you are teaching. You have given them something valuable. And the more value you provide for people, the more money will be coming to your hand. Money is attracted to value. When you look for money, money will run away from you forever. But when you decide to increase your value and make what you are doing valuable, make yourself valuable, money will start running after you. Not really after you, after the value that you are offering. So we say, the principle of value states that money is a reward that comes to a man anytime he adds value to people by solving their problems. Money is an exchange to value. The amount of money that is attracted to a man at any point in time is directly proportional to the level of value he is adding at that point in time, which is a direct product of the amount of problems that he is solving. Your ability to provide solutions to problems is your value. People have hunger problem, hunger. People also have test, test problem. Do you know that if you will just... How many of us have deep freezer here? Deep freezer. Eh? If you can get a bag of pure water and put inside deep freezer and get it out in the morning and put it in the cooler and while you are going to work or going to wherever you are working, you keep it inside, uh, by the side. Eh? And as you are doing your work, will people buy your water that day or not? Eh? You will you will be solving problem of test for people, and because you are solving problem, you will be surprised that in the before the end of the day, you may come back with two hundred naira or three hundred naira. It depends on the scale of the business. Am I saying the truth? Tell your neighbor you have something. There is something you have. Some of us has a special skill to do business. Special. If he enters here now, he's just shaking. Uh, can't we sell this thing? Eh? He will, before we finish, he, will, he has already discovered all the business opportunities that are here. That thing is a gift. Others are not seeing what we are seeing. A man's gift make it what? You have been neglecting that gift, carrying empty certificates and going for uh, interview. They will say, get out from here. You will go another one. And they will be insulting you. A full-fledged man like you. That has something to offer. Now, if you are not owning a business, you must own one. And if you are owning a small scale business, what is God telling us today? You have to expand. You have to expand. You know why I like business? God is my witness. I like business. Even though God has kept me in our father's business for years. You know, at the age of 12... The parents of Jesus said, let us go home. What did he say to them? Don't you know that I must be about my... So, do you know that soul winning, this disciple making is what? It's a business. It's a kingdom business. That's the kind of business God has kept me in for years now. I have been in it. And the business is yielding money. Do you know it's yielding money? That's the law of value. Lord of value states that any time you add value to people, whether you collect money from them or not, money must come to you. So even though I'm not saying the gate fee to this 
um, business seminar. Are you getting something that is changing your life now? You are not answering seriously. And I said the gate fee is two five. I didn't say that. But do you know that because I have taken time to wait upon the Lord, to hear God, what I'm teaching you, I didn't copy it from anywhere. These two keys, God spoke to me and said, this is it, this is it. If you want to check, go and check anywhere and know whether you're going to find it. I waited. From Monday, I began to wait. Every day I said, God, I want to know what these keys are. And he came and said, there are only two. We have left business for unbelievers. And they have turned business to lying liars. Lying enterprise. Every, as if every businessman must be a liar before he succeeds. That's not for a child of God. We have to develop a new way of doing business righteous way and yet flying and dominating for Jesus. So, I may not collect money from you, but if I add value to your life and your life change, you know, there are some of you that after now, you are starting event management immediately. Because in you, you have the ability to manage events. But you have not packaged what you have for sale. Somebody say packaging. Oga, okay. you know what packaging is. You have not packaged your value so that people can buy it. Human beings are not stupid. They don't pay for what is not valuable. And the amount of money they will be willing to give you is the amount of money they believe that what you are offering, what? Do you understand me? Elisha, listen carefully. Elisha healed Naaman. You know, the king of Syria sent Naaman to Israel. And Naaman came to the king of Israel and said, Heal me of my leprosy. They say you people are healing leprosy. And the king of Israel said, Look at how this man is looking for trouble. When did I become a doctor? When did we have a leprosy center? Eh? And Elisha had it and said, Why are you afraid, O king? Tell Naaman to come to me. And he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Somebody say, I have something. And I know what I have. Listen carefully. If I don't know anything, I know that I have an anointing. I have seen it again and again. We are, somebody say, I'm looking for accommodation for months. I will just pray. After one week, he will call and say, thank you, sir. I've gotten it. It has happened again and again. Sickness, barrenness, all sorts of problems. I know that I have an anointing. I know. Elijah said, send him to me. He will know that there is a prophet here. He knew that he has something. And that was why he spoke. When Naaman came, he didn't come out. He sent his servant and said, tell the leper to go and wash himself seven times in Jordan. In Jordan. I don't have time to see him. I'm very busy here with God. And that one was like, I, I thought he should have come and do his hand like this and do, demonstrate and do cha 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 so that I will now know that he has done something. And one of the servants said, Oga, if he has told you to do something that is bigger than this, you should have done that. Go, why don't you go and try? And he went and put himself seven times. Every of his leprosy cleared. He should have gone back to Syria. You know what he did? He packaged money. Packaged silver. Packaged everything and came to the man of God and knelt down and said, man of God, collect money! That one said, Sorry, I don't need money. He was begging him to collect money. Gehazi was looking, nah, eh. Nah, eh. Gehazi, does he have anointing? Those 
who are not working, they don't want to use what they have, they are always covetous. When they see you with money, they say, hey, you should have done something for me now. How can you, you know, have something and you'll be looking, you know? Why don't you go and do something yourself? One of our sisters, I prayed for her last Sunday. She told me that she wants to start a high scale business. High scale. Somebody say high scale. I'm waiting for the first set of products because I'm going to pray for the first. He just, she just imported, brought the materials. She said there is no, if you, you need perfume, if you need um, Vaseline, all kinds of products. I said, this is wow. Have you heard about wow? <laughs> I have to pray. You know what? She's a civil servant. But she said, I want to enter into real business. And I, I want you to watch. Because in few months to come, some of us who doesn't want to own your own business, you will be there lining up for interview in her company. <laughs> Who told you that you cannot be an employee, uh, employer? How did you come to arrive at that? Are you an inferior man? And you have the spirit of God in you. The spirit of excellence. You have anointing. Do you know that even if you say, I don't have anything, you have anointing. These signs shall follow those who believe. Not those who are man of God. Those who believe. In my name they shall lay their hands on the sick. And the sick shall what? Is that not an anointing? You have something. And listen, if you are thinking that you will have financial dominion from carrying certificates around and all of that, the wise people, you know what they say? Look at what they say. An average wise person. I met one of, one of our brothers. He said that he's working in the bank just for 10 years. After 10 years, he is going to establish his own company. He will resign with joy. Now, the person I'm talking about now, eh, is already, I don't know how to describe him already. If he resigns now, he's, he, 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 he will just... Listen. You know what job does? Job is limiting you. Do you know that? Your gift, your gift, if you can discover it, refine it, and package it for a market, and begin to sell it, as Jesus commanded us, the scale is not, is not going to be your limit. You will just start from there. Discover your gift. Some of us has the ability to write well. One of the brothers came here. You know what he said to me? He said to me that he makes average of 10,000 naira a day. What is he making 10,000 naira for? Some people are looking for who will write application for them on the internet. And he, he just has templates. Put up his advertisement. Uh, ad, uh, yes, advertisement. And then when people you know, saw his advert, I wanted to prepare a business plan for me. I wanted to prepare... Um, a, a, a resume for me prepare a CV for me and all of that it will just be charging you charging you and in a day 10,000 quiet work this is not his work oh. this is not his work but with computer quietly 10,000 only 10,000 times 30 is what times 30 is what 300,000 what do you have some of you you know brothers you say you don't have anything and you are begging money here and there. Go and ask Keke riders how much they are making in a day. Keke. You know, some civil servants will just be you know carrying yourself here and there. An average Keke man may make ten thousand naira, fifteen thousand naira, twenty thousand naira in a day. If it is okay, if it is ten thousand in a day, ten thousand times 
25 days. That mean that he's not working on Sunday. He's how much? A senior lecturer in the university has not reached that level. If a KK man earns 20,000 per day, 20,000, 20 times uh, 30 is what? A professor does not earn that. <laughs> oh, you are not getting me. I said, prof, prof waiting. Hungry prof. Hungry prof. Hungry prof. And you see, look at the problem. The villagers and other people are saying, these are the rich people, isn't it? When they see Keke, they say, Is it not Keke? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and who told you that you cannot increase by some people need Keke to ride higher purchase? Buy for them, give them. Do you know what the Lord of that servant told you when he came back? He said, Even if you don't want to do business with my talent, can't you put it in a business? So that there will be what? Interest. I'm not talking about these empty money doublers, Ponzi schemes, MMM, that carry your money. Genuine business. Any business that say invest your money, I will give you more than 10% in a month. Suspect it. Suspect it. It may not be genuine, it may not last. 10% is very big enough. 5% is also okay. I met a man of God and he was, you know, encouraging me to invest instead of putting money in just savings account. And he said that, he was giving me an example, that they are running a school and a woman gave them five million naira. And what they return to her every year is, is it one million or 1.5 million naira? Every year, every year, every year. Instead of putting the money somewhere, she is making See, the one million naira is not part of her money. Her money, five million is intact. They will give her her money. But for releasing the money, they are giving her interest of one million naira every year. So as the year ends, she will just collect. Listen, you think that to be a millionaire is very difficult. It's not. It's fear that is the problem. That was why. Do you remember the first passage we read? What was Jesus began to handle first of all? Before he says, sell what you have, he knows where the problem is. What's the problem? Fear. Let's go back to that place. I don't have enough time today. I, I, I'm going to come back. Maybe the day we are going to handle the, the second key, management. I will still touch some things in business. Because I've not touched some things now. Now look at that Luke chapter 12 verse 32 before 33 Luke 12 32 look at it some of you came late you know some of you that came late you better get what you missed because you have missed a lot before you came read it now fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to do what to make you a a millionaire a to, to make you to dominate financially. Listen, you see, eh, you know we have shared these things last Sunday, last two Sundays. Do you know what is keeping us here? When we want to do uh, discipleship, we start taking, arranging the hall and all of that. Instead of entering into our cool uh, building. Do you know what is keeping us here? You have refused to sell what you... By the time all of you begin to sell what you have and money began to come into your pocket and we say we need to get three plots of land, five plots of land at independence layout. Is it a ghost that buys land there? You are rejoicing that you are living at independence layout. Why can't you get land there? What is stopping you? I challenge you today to buy your own land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before I will finish talking, 
All the money. You know, these things are not difficult. You say there is no land. It's because there is no money. A man of God went to one country. I think I've shared it before. They say there is no land. They don't give land for churches. He bought a, a company. Changed the signboard. Put his church signboard. There are many ways to kill a rat. If you don't give me a land, I will buy a company. Change the signboard. Start my church. Break down the houses and build. Do you know what I'm building inside? It's because there's no money. We go to the center of the city. Buy us. Do you know that as I'm talking to you now? There are properties for sale. Houses for sale. You don't even know because, you know... <laughs> The information that are coming to you is, is at your level. Where you, <laughs> where you are. The information you, you know is how much they are selling uh, ugly and all, say, and all of that. That's the kind of information that are co- coming to you. God is delivering somebody today in the name of Jesus. What do you have? Some of us have special skill in carpentry work. You can decorate. You can arrange. You can organize. You can see... The last work I will do on earth is carpentry work. I don't, I'm not gifted there at all. I read electrical electronics engineering. The first day I attempted wiring, I vowed I would never do it again till I die. Climbing up to wire. Not before me and my generation. But I read electrical electronics engineering. It's not in me at all. I don't have it. You must know what you have. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. I know what I don't have. But at least I know what I have. Come on, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. I have anointing. I know what I don't have. So I don't go near their side. But you know what you have. That keyboard you can play. Why don't you become competent in it? So that when they look for the best keyboard player in Enugu, they will not think twice before they call your name. You have a voice that can sing. In Instead of joining the excellent worship team so that they will, your gift will come out. In Come out! Somebody is changing today. In fact, somebody has already changed. Rise on your feet and say, God, I am ready to sell what I have. I am ready. Begin to pray now. Begin to pray. Malebo shakaka. Begin to pray. Lendelebo shandola basaka. Riba shandele. You can expand that business. You can add to it. You can. Our master has given us a command. You must obey him as a disciple. This is for disciples. We can be complaining about the economy of Nigeria when we have something. Jesus said, fear not. Go into business. Fear not. Expand that business. Fear not. There are much you can do. Hey! Every time money will not be in your hand. Every time money will not be enough in your hand. When you can add something to what you are doing, as a civil servant, you can buy clothes from Abba, and when you go to office, you display it, and your colleagues will be buying clothes from you, and we add it to what you have. Expand, add value, increase. Don't stop where you are. Move, move. High scale. As a student, you can do business. As a student, you can sponsor yourself. If not, why not? Refine your gift. Make it to be shiny. Let it have a value. People will pay for it. You are venturing into what you don't have. When you have not used what you have, you left what you have lying dormant. And what you don't have, you are pursuing it. No. Sell what you have. You have something. 
It's time to step out. God will back you up. Fear not. You are meant to be a billionaire. You can't be begging for money. Transport money. Money for food. Money for clothes. Enough is enough. Come on, you are stepping out now. Lebo shaka. Lebo shaka. Landa raba sende. Londo laba kula raba seke. Rika lebo shanda. Malanda raba suma. Remo kula raba sanda. Lende lebo shanda raba baba baba. Do your own business. Says the Lord. Do your own business. Walk with your hands. You can make beads. You can make beads. You can make sweater. You can sew a cloth. Learn a skill. Learn a skill. Master it. Develop it. It will pay you and pay others. Come out. Fear not. Start it. Come on, start it. God is interested. He wants to give you the kingdom. He wants to give you domain. He wants to give you dominion. Come on, step out. Expand that business. It's time for expansion. You must rise now. You must count your money in millions now. It's time. God said to the man, Be fruitful. Multiply. Must produce. Must produce that product. Replenish the earth. Have branches all over the earth. And you will control the market. You will subdue. And then you will have dominion. Add value. Poverty will run away from you when you start selling what you have. What do you have? The woman is crying and blaming her husband that is dead. Blaming her husband that is dead. When she has something. Stop blaming your, your, your husband. Stop blaming your husband. You have something, woman. Go and mass produce it. And sell the oil. And you will pay your debts. Stop blaming your parents. You have something. God created you with a gift. Discover it. Refine it. Sell it. Package it. Stop wasting your time. Fear not. Step out. Start that school. Open that school. Open it. Open that school. Fear not. God will back you up. He will multiply your effort. He will give you success. Open the school. Start that shop. Start peanut business. Start frying buns. You have the freezer. You can sell ice block. If not, why not? Add value to people. And money will come. Refuse to be small. The seed of greatness is inside of you. The seed of dominion is inside of you. Say, I refuse to be small. I am born to dominate for God. I am born to rule. Disciples, rise up in this time and do exploits in business. Every one of you, do your own business. Civil job will cripple you and will never increase your salary. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven stable land. Hey, I play down I have found Oh plant my feet on a ground You are good in sports You are good in, in sports You can run well 
you, you think everybody can run like you? You don't know that God has given you that as a seed of dominion. You can play ball well. You can play volleyball well. You are good in one area. And he's dormant. Package it now. I am feeling an anointing here. There's a special anointing God is releasing here. He's very strong. He's coming upon somebody. That anointing came up on, on, under my feet. The anointing is moving you to run now. You must run. Your children must not lack bread. Their school fees must be paid on time. It's time to dominate. Lepo shanto kandala bashanda rabasanda. Lende lepo shanda. Hallelujah. Lende lepo shanto kandala bashanda. Lende lepo shanto kandala bashanda. Lende lepo shanto labasanda. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah. What I'm hearing now, the Lord said, He's giving someone here speed in business. He said, Tomorrow, just tomorrow, that He is bringing clarity in the business that you are entering into. The anointing has come. I felt it where I am now. The Lord is anointing you f- for speed. Yes, He's releasing wisdom on how to package your value now. To package what you have. Now, listen, He said, I should give us an assignment today. That assignment is if you go home now, don't fail to do the assignment because He asked me to pray for us next Sunday. You know, the man of God prayed, He spoke to the woman. And the anointing of the man of God began to multiply the oil. Do you remember? When Jesus prayed on the five loaves of bread and three fishes, what happened to those fishes? They began to multiply. Now, the Lord has asked me to pray for you. So, but I don't want to do that in a hurry. I will be doing that next Sunday. If you go home now, look at the assignment. Write down everything you you believe you have. And then screen them in prayer. Screen them in prayer. And write out problems that each of them can solve. And then arrange them. And then pick one or two. If you have, if you say, maybe you know you can drive very well. Or you want to come with the key. Anything that can represent what you want to do. Maybe you want to start an event management or you want to start any kind of business. Just pick something that will represent it and come next Sunday. The Lord say, I should pray that his blessing will rest upon that work of your hand. And for those of us who are already in business, come with something from that business next Sunday. I will pray upon it and that business will explode. Lift up your two hands. Say you shall remember the Lord your God For it is he that giveth you power To get wealth Come on receive that power now Jesus said fear not Every spirit of fear in you I cast it out now The spirit of courage and boldness Faith Let it fill you now And I see you stepping out Running out To sell what you have Say I have something I have have discovered it I I will refine it it. And I will package it for sale And And the Lord will bless the market The The Lord will bless the business The Lord will bless that business As God commanded us to own our own business, every one of you, whether you are a student, whether you are an adult, there is no excuse. You must own at least one business. I command the spirit of 
business ownership to come upon you now. Every desire to be idle and lazy and be dependent, come on, let it die in you now. Like Paul, we walk with his hand, make tents, and take it to the market. And they say, Paul, this is your tent. How much are you selling it? He said, bring 1,000. He will collect 1,000. He will collect 2,000. He will use the money to go and buy food, cook food and eat. And he's not complaining. He's not coveting any man's silver or gold. So shall you deploy your gift from today. You will not beg bread because you are doing your own business. And the Almighty God is blessing you from today. Go and succeed. If you believe that, say a better amen. Amen. Go and succeed. Say an earthquake in amen. 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 Every limitation in your mind, every limitation in your heart, everything that wants to limit you from family background, ancestral spirits, powers, forces that are fighting your destiny. Today, I destroy them. I destroy their altars. I destroy their manipulations. I cast them out of your life. Out of your family. Out of your ways. I release the spirit of God. The angels of the living God. They will walk with you. And you shall prosper and dominate financially for Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen.